All right, so the logarithm is the inverse of an exponential function. Okay, so um, I always think of the log is the exponent. The log is the exponent. The log is the exponent, right? The output of a log is an exponent. Okay, <laughs> drill that into your head because um, that really helps. I, I feel like that helps me understand um, when I, you know, whenever I see a log, I think, okay, exponent, exponent. That's what the output of a log is. Now, there are a couple different kinds of logarithms that are common. <laughs> One is called the common logarithm, and it's the base 10 log. Okay, so a logarithm with a base 10 is the common logarithm. And the other um, frequently used a logarithm is the natural logarithm, which has a base of E, which is Euler's constant. All right, so um, let's go through this a couple examples because I want to show you how to how to um, or give you a little more practice with um, uh, computing inverses with um, logarithms and exponential functions. Now we already did one in example one, right? But it's one of those things that you know kind of get rusty at <laughs> if you don't do it very often. All right, so this first example is just um, talking about pH. So to compare the acidity of different solutions chemists use pH. And pH is defined in terms of the concentration of the hydrogen ions in the solution. And so um, if you know the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution, you can compute the pH by taking the negative log, base 10 log, of um, the hydrogen ion concentration in moles per liter, right? I guess it doesn't say that, but... <laughs> um, so. Um, now we want to find we, we want to find a formula for the hydrogen ion concentration um, given the pH. Okay, so we're basically trying to compute the inverse of this pH function. All right, so all right, so let's first of all okay, I want to solve for hydrogen ions, right? So um, I want to solve for I want my output to be uh, hydrogen ions and my input to be pH. Okay, because I'm trying to flip around the input and the output here. All right, so first of all, let's just divide by negative one or multiply both sides by negative one. You can think of it either way. So we get the negative pH is equal to the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, and so now to solve, now remember that um, logs and exponents are uh, inverses of each other and the LOG log, the common logarithm, has a base of 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, raise both, I'm going to use this, This I'm actually using the, the equality property of logarithms, or the equality property of uh, exponents, however you want to think about it. Um, so if I raise both sides to uh, take 10 and raise the, <laughs> raise the, uh, uh, raise it to both of these equal things, I'll get equal things. So the 10 to the negative pH is equal to 10 to the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, so that allows me to get rid of the log, all right, and, and solve for the hydrogen ion concentration, right? Because again, um, these are inverses of each other. 10, the, ex, um, the exponent of 10 is the inverse of the log. So what I end up with on this side is just the hydrogen ion concentration right? And then over here I get this is 10 to the minus pH, okay? So I could I could read that, I could write that the other way if because I'm I, what I want is a function for the hydrogen ion concentration in terms of pH. So that would be my formula. Now let's take a look at this next example, all right? So this, here we have an exponential equation, okay? And um, so here we're, we're dealing with, okay, so science can, scientists can estimate the age of a fossil, fossil remains of an organism by comparing the amount of carbon-14 in the fossil to the amount uh, in a living sample. So um, we're defining some variables here. Q0 is the initial amount of carbon-14 in a living sample, and K is the de decay rate of carbon-14. And then we have an, an equation here for the um, amount of carbon-14 in the fossil after t years. Okay, so we have this equation. So if we 
know how much you know we would expect in a in a living um, sample, and we know the decay rate, and we're given the time, we can figure out how um, much carbon fourteen would be left. All right. So now, as you would expect, <laughs> if you're if you're doing a carbon fourteen dating, what you really want to know is the time. So you want to measure how much carbon fourteen is left in the sample, and um, and then calculate or estimate how much how long that thing has been dead. All right. So we want to rearrange this equation so we have a, a function uh, for time in terms of the quantity of carbon 14. Okay, so we're just going to take this equation and uh, I'm going to start by just dividing both sides by Q0. Okay, Q over um, Q0 is equal to e to the kt. Okay, now I want to get the uh, time out of the exponent, right? So I'm going to use logarithms to do that. So if I take the natural log of both sides, Q over Q0, all right, and then we take the natural log of e to the kt. If you remember how logarithms work, essentially this right-hand side just becomes, um, oops, let me erase that a little mark. I want to, this um, right-hand side just becomes kt, right, because I'm taking the inverse of the exponent, right, so that's the natural log. All right, and then over here, I can use the property. I could just leave it like that, but or I could use a property of exponents that says that the, um, you know, the the log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. So the log, oops. So this, this is uh, let me. <laughs> we were dealing with the natural log now, right? Because we have a base of e, so we have the natural log of q minus the natural log of q zero. Okay, so now we want a function for t. That's pretty simple at this point, so we just need to divide both sides by k. And I'm going to flip it around so I have t on the left-hand side here. So we have the natural log of q minus the natural log of q0 all over k. All right, so now I have a function for t, the time elapsed, um, given the um, amount of carbon 14 left in a sample.